Hello, welcome to the Eclectic Reader. Listen to great books and stories while you use your eyes and hands for other things. Now here's your host, Madison Mason. Hi there, Madison Mason here. Glad you're enjoying The Great Quarry Boys. Here's Chapter 10. The Great Quarry Boys, Chapter 10. Sonny Balkum. Now Joey stopped on the hill and looked down on Maudie's farm at the curve of the dark road below. Orange light from the windows wavered in the grass as the sycamores danced black shadows across the old farmhouse in the breeze. The street light swung in the night, splashing across the weathered uprights of her porch, where the empty glider swung as if ghosts were enjoying the night air. He trotted down the hill, past quiet pines, and into the light. He climbed the stairs to a Victorian door and peered in the glass oval at the center. Joey knocked softly. When no one answered, he spun the bell, savoring the rich ring that echoed on the other side. After a moment, Sonny's solid form emerged from the back of the house, his jet hair flashing blue as he passed under the hall lights. His quiet face peered through the lace before opening the door. Hey. Country folk never said hi. Always hey. Hey, hey, Sonny, I'm ready to go. You ready? Almost. Wait for me around back. Okay. Sonny was a man of few words. A hard adjustment for Joey, who ran off at the mouth until he ran out of breath. Years with his mother gave Joey some bad habits. Sonny taught by example. If you didn't have anything to say, don't say it. He turned to step off the porch and heard Maudie's raucous voice. Sonny, is that Joey? Yep, Sonny sent back into the house. Come here, Joey, come here. I want to see you, she yelled. Come on in, he said. Okay. Sonny smiled and rumpled his hair as he walked in, knowing it would bother him to have messy hair in front of Maudie. Joey was honored that he touched him. Inside, the house was warm and smelled like family. He walked down a hall with a banister staircase, under which stood an aged grandfather clock and a tall gun cabinet from olden days. It held rifles and shotguns passed down, polished, oiled, and revered since the Civil War. To the left was the living room. Marty sprawled in a big red recliner before the black and white TV. The light bounced off the sparkling linoleum floor in long, flickering streaks as she stuck her head around the edge of the chair and grinned from under her pink hairnet. Come on in, honey. You want some dinner wafers? Yes, ma'am, he said, staring at the roller derby on the tiny screen. Joey's house didn't have a TV. Sonny, Joey needs milk. He sat down on a vinyl ottoman near her chair as she grinned her stained smile and offered him the Nabisco box. How you doing? I ain't seen you. Fine, I guess. I, I had the hives pretty bad. Oh, ain't they miserable? I had them once. I never itched so bad in all my life. I swole all up, he said, to sound country as he could. I look like some kind of you bangy or something. Maybe you got spider bit. My mom says it was seafood. Hmm, could be, she ruminated, turning back to the female violence on screen. Oh, slam. Oh, bet that hurt. Sonny handed him a huge glass of cold milk, and he grabbed a handful of vanilla wafers. They all stared at the screen in rapt contentment while Sonny laced up his hunting boots. After a few minutes, he winked at Joey and nodded toward his mother. Maudie slumped in the recliner with her mouth open. They rose quietly and walked out through the kitchen onto the back porch. Sonny handed Joey a burlap sack and the biggest flashlight he had ever seen. Sonny unscrewed the end and slid in batteries that made a hollow noise as they clonked down the shaft. You ever been coon hunting? He wanted to lie and say yes. Nope. Well, we're going to have fun. Here, hold this gunny sack. I was about your age when I first went. How old are you? He started to lie again. Uh, Thirteen and three quarters. Good age to start. You're young, strong. Joey chilled with pride and stood a little taller. Sonny's voice was confident and deep, never louder than a mutter. He tried copying the way Sonny talked, but was strung too tight. 
Sonny Balcom had the taciturn sadness of a man who had seen too much at an early age. He'd been in Korea when he was 19 and got wounded bad near Pyongyang, but he never talked about it. He had medals for valor, but he kept them in his footlocker in the attic, Maudie said. He also had two purple hearts. Joey couldn't imagine the soft-spoken guy in a war. You gonna be warm enough? I think so. I can give you long johns if you want. It's okay. It made him feel like he was with a Medal of Honor hero like Audie Murphy. Whatever he did in Korea, it was brave and heroic, and Joey wanted to be just like Sonny no matter what. Well, let's go get them dogs. They walked out to the backyard carrying the sack and the heavy flashlight. Joey pointed it high into the sky. The beam was so powerful he knew someone on Jupiter was looking at it right now. He shut it off. Dogs started barking and yelping behind the shed before they saw them. They know we're going hunting. When they reached the pen, the hounds were leaping to the top of the fence, baying and ringing in the night, their frantic tails beating each other like whips. Sonny opened the gate and entered. The dogs were all over him, grinning, barking, and licking. He spoke lovingly and gathered their chains, clipping each one to a collar. Joey had never seen anything like this. Obviously, they loved to hunt, and they trembled with anticipation. Sonny quietly weeded out the five dogs he wanted to take with him from the nine or so leaping in the dark. The boy couldn't figure out how he knew which were which. Finally, he opened the gate and handed Joey four lead chains. Here, hold these. I'll get the others back in. Joey grabbed hold of the chains, and the dogs took off in four different directions, sniffing, dragging him around the yard, banging him into the clothesline pole, across the chopping stump, and toward Marty's garden, tails slicing the night. Hold him back, Sonny called, as if Joey had any say. He tugged with all his strength and barely managed to slow them. At the edge of Maudie's careful planting, Sonny rescued him before they ruined her lettuce and tomatoes. <laughs> oh, boy, <laughs> she'll kill us all if we wreck her garden. He pulled the dogs into a bouquet of eager sniffing heads and slobbering tongues. Joey reached down to stroke a nose. Uh-uh, don't pet them. These here's hunting dogs. Don't treat them like house dogs. It ruins them. You can pet them afterwards. Can you handle these two? I, I, I think so. He took the leads of the two youngest dogs. Are these the pups, he ventured? That's them. Coon, hounds, and boot camp. Sonny took the leaders and headed through the field toward the woods. Joey trotted alongside. Don't we need guns, he asked, breathless already as he stumbled across the plowed furrows. Nope. Don't take no guns, coon hunting. How how do we kill him then? He hoped he'd be shooting. We don't kill him. We bring him home, put him in a pen, fatten him up to eat later. Possum too. Same thing. They're too gamey if you eat them fresh. You can, but they taste like... His voice trailed off as he stopped. The hounds went silent, sniffing the air. After a moment, they started on again. Joey understanding little, learning on the trot. The night was sweet. The dogs dragged them on until they reached the edge of the woods, and then they stopped. Sonny stood still, letting them drink in the night air through wet noses. Eyes bulged in the darkness as they assessed unseen signs their instinct revealed. Sonny pulled a plug of black tobacco from his breast pocket and bit off a chunk. You want a chaw? Uh, uh, no thanks, Joey said, scared to grow up too fast. Here, I got something for you, he said, and dug out a yellow pack of juicy fruit gum. Joey opened a piece and chewed, pretending it was the same nasty brown tobacco he was to learn of later. Suddenly, the lead dog stiffened and yelped. <coughs> Sonny leaned down. You got him, Sarah? Sarah closed her eyes and sucked in the night air, shuddering and straining against her collar toward the wood. <coughs> Sonny whispered, <coughs> Get him, and let her loose. Her claws threw grit as the dog vanished, the shadow of a bullet into the black woods. The others listened furiously, every sinew tense, trembling with the thrill. The pups all whined and strained against their chains as they waited. It seemed like a lifetime. Then they heard Sarah deep in the woods. Her baying voice rang through the forest like a low bell. And the pack went wild. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of The Eclectic Reader. Please go on to the next numbered episode to continue. Also, check us out on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. If you'd like to help support the project, 
you can donate under Madison Mason at Patreon. And please, check out our website, kltkrdr.com, for more information. Hi, this is Madison Mason. I want to personally thank you for listening to The Eclectic Reader and invite you to share your experience, your thoughts, and your suggestions. We have many great books lined up for the future, but if you have requests for anything that is in the public domain, please email us at kltkrdr at gmail.com. kltkrdr at gmail.com